Hello everybody, I'm going to discuss logical operators, the short circuit logical operators, and then testing characters and strings. For the operators, I'm going to go to tutorials point, have a look at their uh, list of operators. Okay, so for the logical operators, we're going to use these when we want to combine conditions. So you know already what is a condition? Um, something like a test. If number is less than 10 for example, this is seen as a condition. Sometimes I want to combine conditions. I want to test if more than just um, one value is true. In this situation that we saw already in the previous topic, I need to test if both a code and a price um, will fulfill a certain condition to determine discount. I then showed you how to write the best possible type of if statement for that scenario um, according to me and that would be to have an outside if for the code and if the code is a certain value a second if, an inside if, a nested if to test the price. But now we're going to see how we can combine those two. I can use the operators AND, OR, OR ELSE and AND also, depending on however I need it to combine conditions. So let's leave this like with AND, I test one condition, the second one, I join them and this combined condition will now be true or false depending on certain rules to give me a discount of one or the other percentage. Maybe the easiest way to see how AND works is if we go have a look at a truth table. So if the first condition is um, shown with P and the second condition is A or Q and they are combined with AND, the following would um, happen. If the first condition is true and the second is true, if the two are combined with AND, then the combined condition is seen as true. But if one of the conditions only are true, or if none, then in all three circumstances, the combined condition is seen as false. So, I'm testing two conditions. If both of them are true, the combined condition is seen as true. Okay, so in my situation over here, I've got an if statement to assign a certain percentage. I've only got one if over here. I want to show you how AND works. So we are going to assume these input values. The code is a B character and the price is 1500. So does code store A is what the first thing tests and this would be false, eh? Because code stores a B. Is price less than a thousand? That would be false as well. And now my truth table will tell me if I've got false and false and I combine them, then the combined condition is seen as false. Okay. If on the other hand I used the OR operator in this case and let's say the price is only 500. Okay. OR operator works as follows. And this time around in this example the first um, 
condition is called I and the second is called B if we join the two conditions. If both are false, then the combined condition is false. But if I have only one true at least, then the combined condition is seen as true. So what does that mean? If I've got something like this, code stores a B, price stores 500, I'm checking. Does code store an A? That would be false. Does price have a value less than a thousand? That would be true. If I've got false or true, that means the combined condition is seen as true. That means the discount of 5% would be used. That's how we evaluate these. So AND and OR. For AND, both conditions must be true for the combined condition to be true. Otherwise, I'm always going to execute the ELSE statements. For the situation with the code and the price where we need to determine the discount percentage, I can now change the IF statement so that it reads as follows. If the code is A and the price is less than a thousand. Otherwise, if the code is A and the price is more than that. Let's compare the two if statements next to one another. It's the easiest. On the right hand side I've got an if statement that the outside if is the code only A or B or C in this situation. If the code is A then we only test the price with an inside if. Okay. This whole if, it's an if, else, and an end if, situated or placed inside the true section. Very possible to do that. I can also write the if on the right hand side using the AND operator. And then I'm going to combine the conditions each time I now need to repeat my test for the code and then the test for the price. Personally, I like the if statement on the right a lot more. Um, it's more maintainable, easier to read. On the left hand side, it's so, so easy to make a mistake. If you do one thing wrong, then very often the rest of the if statement is incorrect. Okay, so the truth tables helps us. It shows us what happens with the AND and the OR operators. The NOT operator just changes from true to false or false to true. Exclusive OR I'm not going to discuss right now. I want to th then further on have a look at and also and or else. And also and or else um, they work pretty much the same as their their mates. So and also his friend is called the and operator. Just the normal and and the or operator has got a or else friend. Now and also and or else a little bit better. They perform what is called short circuit evaluation. So it's like quicker evaluation. Okay. So wherever you can, always use and also or, or else. Let me quickly show you how they would execute. Let's take the following situation. Let's assume the code is B and the price is a thousand five hundred. If I use and then the following is going to happen. Line 33 executes. Code is compared to A. That would be false. Price would be compared to less than a thousand. That would be false. That's false and false would be false. So that means go to the else. Test again. Is the code A? No, it's false. Is the price 
bigger than a thousand yes it's true combined condition I've got a false and a true that means it's a combined false so that means goes to else test code equal to B that's true test the price is that less than 500 no it's false true and false would be give me a false that means go to the else part now test again is the code B yes is the price more than 500 yes and now I've got true and true so that means my percentage for B high would be used 4% after this end if and all the statements thereafter would execute so it's quite a few tests if I write exactly the same code and I use and also instead of and always everywhere then the following is going to happen let's take this exact same scenario again so it's going to test is the code equal to A that would be a false and now and also is the clever brother of the two he knows oh, it doesn't matter what's price my combined condition is already going to be false so I better just skip to the next part it tests again again gets code is not an A so that's false and again it skips now it goes to B test the code gets the code is a B so that part is true now only does it test the price and see price is false so again the combined condition is false go to the next section test the code code is B test the price price is um, this is also true 1500 is bigger than 500 so combined condition is true assign the percentage can you see that some tests were skipped didn't do that test didn't do that test and this is the benefit of and also of the short circuit evaluation if the first part of the condition is false then there's no need to test the, the rest and, and so also then doesn't test it so I've got a little bit quicker execution with or else or else goes and check if the first condition is true then it doesn't matter what's the second condition the combined condition is seen as true and the if statement is evaluated and the last part that I want to discuss now would be testing characters and strings when I get input from the user very often the user input might be lowercase or uppercase but that cause problems to my PC over here I'm showing you the ASCII table now PCs nowadays use actually um, a little bit more sophisticated table called Unicode but the ASCII table is the first section tablet of the Unicode characters and have a look each of the characters that you sort of know has got a whole table full of data okay so if I take the capital K it resides at position 75 a decimal value in the table it's got some other data that we're not going to work with the hexadecimal and the octal values as well okay so position 75 a lowercase k is at position 107 now this causes some input errors for me if my input for example is lowercase format but I want to test is the code an uppercase k then I'm gonna have huge problems because if the user typed a lowercase k this if statement of mine would never be true 
because the actual decimal values are compared. In lowercase k and uppercase k reside at different positions in the tables, in the character tables. So before we always use input from the user, before we test it, we're always going to convert the input to uppercase. Let's go show you. So let's just take this data over here. Let's assume I actually now want to get the data from the text box. TXT code or text. Actually text. If I leave it like it is currently, I first of all have a problem. This is a string and the code is a character. So I can say convert the data to a character. It would only take the first character for me. Still I will have a problem because the user might have typed a lowercase a or b or c. I would rather like to convert the code to uppercase. Easiest way to do so is maybe to use the character clause itself. Our data type that we've got, char. It's a class and it stores quite a few methods. So if I go and say call the to upper function, have a look. Here we use functions again. It's going to take a character and it's going to give me back a character. So I can say take the code and convert the code to an uppercase. I can just store the code in exactly the same variable. This in effect will convert the code to uppercase for me. So I can convert my code to uppercase before I test it. Okay, real, real important. Thank you, Bing.